Well, hey guys, it's Mike Festiva here. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to actually take the mystery out of TIG welding. If you're interested in TIG welding or only practice a little bit and don't know everything you need to set up your machine and get TIG welding, I'm going to take all the mystery out of that for you. So in about 20 minutes, I can explain what you need to know. After that, it's just up to you to practice. So let's get going on the video. So I got two TIG machines sitting next to me. They might look very similar, but they're extremely different. So this is Yes Welder's TIG 250P, and this is Yes Welder's MIG 205DS. This is a multi-process MIG stick and TIG, but it's DC TIG only. We'll get to that in a moment. This is Yes Welder's AC-DC TIG. This is much more advanced. This has a lot of features, and it can handle welding aluminum, a lot of things like that. We'll get into this a lot more in the next video. I just want to not bog you guys down too much information. We're going to go back to base. No foot pedal, no nothing. Gonna weld steel in this video, but once you learn that technique, we'll move on to welding aluminum in the next. So we're gonna get this one out of here and we'll come back with this and go over the features of this thing and how to get you welding soon. Basic setup here. This is just gonna get you in the ballpark for everything you need to just like start TIG welding and you can play around with all these numbers later. And I'll put a little sheet on the side here so you guys can see what I'm covering throughout this whole part. Starting off with gas, you want 100% pure argon gas. And you want it to flow about 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour. Believe me, you don't want 7525 what you use on your MIG. That gas will not shield this right. Believe me, I made that mistake in the beginning when I was learning a few years ago. It turns out awful. Just take my word for it. 100% pure argon. You can use a gauge like this or you can use a little flow meter. It doesn't matter, but 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour is what you want your gas flow. Now tungsten. I like blue and I like gray tungsten. You can do a ton more research on these. I highly recommend staying away from the red tungsten. There's just some bad stuff in there, so you don't want that. I'm gonna go over in the end of this part here how to grind your tungsten and get it ready for welding. You got your cups on the end of your torch here. If you guys don't know, this is a TIG torch. I hope you know this much by now. I hope you did a little research. To get your tungsten in and out, you loosen this up here and it loosens the arbor for your tungsten to slide in and out of, you're going to be grinding these a lot. As soon as you dip your tungsten in your metal, which is going to happen numerous times, don't keep welding. Just take it out, grind it, or put another one in. You'll be better off that way. Once it gets dipped, it's contaminated. You need to clean it up. So anyways, you loosen that up, you can slide it back in. I like a stick out. This is my personal preference between quarter inch and five sixteenths. It works pretty good for me. Everyone likes different things. As you see, this cup looks a little different. Sometimes you'll see Longer versions of this pink one on the front of the TIG. Whatever you have works for you, try them out. But I like the clear Pyrex cups. Most of these parts and things I'm gonna use will be links to for you can check them out on Amazon. Whether you choose to buy them there for your own source, it doesn't matter. I'll just put links so you can see them. So I prefer a little stubby gas lens kit. You actually get better gas coverage on your part. It helped me out a lot because the Pyrex is clear. You can see through it. You can see what you're doing a lot easier. This changed the learning curve big time for me was a stubby gas lens kit. So we're gonna be using gray tungsten in here and I like to run 330 seconds. You can get these packs on Amazon. I'll put a link to them. Like I said, blue or gray works fine for me for steel or aluminum. People might have their own preference. I haven't really noticed a difference between the two. But this pack has some 16th inch and 330 seconds. I like to run 330 seconds for most of my welding. So when I mentioned earlier the different colors, it's actually representing the tip of the tungsten. This is gray and this is blue. If you want to know more detail about the, each of these and the properties of them, you can look it up on your own time. Uh, if we really get into all the technical terms with TIG welding, this video will drag on far over an hour. So if you really need the technical side of things, I highly recommend you seek a class in your area or do hours worth of research for yourself. So just gonna cover the basics here to get you TIG welding because you've probably been wanting to learn and use your TIG torch for a long time. So I want you to give you the basics and not flood you with information. I just want you to hit the ground running and be able to start practicing. Real quick about the cups here. This is the Pyrex I was talking about earlier. This is a stubby porcelain. Sometimes they're longer than this. This is a number five cup. This is, I think, an eight or 10. You see the difference. It's for different coverage of gas and getting into tighter areas. I do aluminum and steel welding with this Pyrex. I think it's an eight or 10. It does everything I need. They're fairly fragile. If you drop them, you'll break them, but quite a few come in a kit. Just keep that in mind. Go over how this TIG torch comes apart really quick. This is a manual torch, this is a gas valve. You literally have to turn on to get gas coverage and when you're done welding, you turn it off. The fancier machines, you push a button or operate a pedal and it will turn it on with a gas solenoid inside the machine. This one's simple, but I like simplicity, it's, it's good. So we're gonna take this apart real quick so you know how to change your tungsten. You can loosen this up right here and you can slide the tungsten in and out of the collet. We're going to take the whole torch apart so you can see. And if you're welding in a tight area, these kits all come with stubbier caps and there's even one that's only about that long, really short. So we'll take this thing apart here. This comes off the back. 
There's your tungsten. You can slide it out either way. This is your collet that tightens down on it. We'll go over that a little more in a moment. Here's your stubby gas lens that just held on with an O-ring. So there's your lens. It's a little stainless steel mesh in here. This provides a lot better gas flow if you get a stubby gas lens kit. So there's the torch body there. This is your collet. It goes into here and this is your end cap. When you tighten this down, it actually pushes that collet there and squeezes it down on the tungsten so it can't slide. That's how you adjust your distance on your stick out on your tungsten. Now let's take this thing out and I'll show you guys what you're gonna shoot for for grinding these things and we'll fire up the torch and start welding. All right, get into the grinding section. So here is the tungsten on the right, of course, is the sharpened one. It's maybe a little under quarter inch, probably like more like three sixteenths. And this is three thirty seconds tungsten. The one on the right, of course, is ground. The one on the left is a blunt one that's brand new. So we're going to get to grinding here. We'll go over to the grinder. and I'll show you what you're looking for. All right, now to grind, I'm going to tell you what you don't want to do first, and then we'll get into the technique what you want to do. I know naturally it seems like you'd have the grinding stone running, and you would just spiral it like this, and of course you're going to have a similar taper like that. What you're going to have also is grinding lines that are circular around the tungsten, and that's no good. You want lines going down it. So basically, if you have spiral lines going down the tungsten from grinding it like this, it's actually going to cause your uh, arc to be very irregular and just be moving around. It's not going to be very pinpoint. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold it steady like this, put it up at a steep angle and rotate your tungsten slowly while you're grinding it. This way all the lines will be going down towards the tip of the tungsten and gets a much steadier arc. Uh, another thing people mentioned you want to have a dedicated stone for grinding your tungsten. This one has a pretty good groove for me mostly grinding here but I grind other things on here too. In a perfect world you'd have one stone for tungsten. In a real world you're just going to use the bench grinder that you got. We're almost ready to start an arc with this little TIG torch, but first we gotta hook up the ground clamp or the work lead and the torch. We got our ground clamp or work lead. We got a positive and negative terminal on here. Which lead is this gonna hook onto the positive or negative? This is where TIG gets a little tricky. This work clamp or ground is gonna hook to the positive terminal. Yes, the positive. And we're gonna hook our TIG torch to the negative side. After that, all we need to do is hook up our gas from the lead right to the regulator here. Set our gas flow, 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour, and we're good to go. Make sure to open your gas valve all the way and close it all the way, not just halfway open. You wanna make sure to open it all the way or not at all, because there's another little seal in here. And if you don't have it open all the way, you can lose a little gas around that seal. To set your torch gas flow, you're gonna open up your torch and you're gonna adjust it up until we get to that's 20 we're going to go back to about 15 cubic feet per hour should be good to go the gas doesn't go through this machine at all it comes right out of the regulator right through the lead and right to the torch and like i said earlier this is a manual gas valve you are the pre and post well you determine that so you open the valve before you start your weld you weld and when you're done you lift it away break the arc hold your gas over it for a little while once you're done shielding it you close it off we'll go into just a little bit of up close shots about the tig talk about the difference between scratch start lift and high frequency this machine's not high frequency that's going to be covered more in the second part for weld aluminum this is a lift machine fortunately which is good uh no pedals used at all whatsoever this machine, you can't run a pedal, and some people think that's a real big downside. It isn't. On DC, you weld stainless steel and steel. You really don't have to adjust your amperage other than dialing it in on the front of the panel. Kind of like your stick welding. You set your amperage right, you're good to go. You don't really need to vary the pedal unless you're welding aluminum on an AC-DC machine. This is a DC only. I just moved the machine off the table in a ways away. It's still off. Keep in mind where the louvers are on the side because just actually having the fan blowing across your work table from the welder can be enough to blow your shielding gas away from your work. If it blows your shielding gas away from your work, you'll have a really nasty looking like brown city welds. That's bad gas coverage or sparks. You don't want sparks sparks with TIG. It's really not like that. It's not like MIG or stick with sparks flying everywhere. It's very quiet, very clean. It's a really neat process. Time consuming, but pretty neat. We're going to go into metal cleanup in a moment, but first I want to talk about lift and scratch machines. This is actually a lift machine, which is a little nicer than a scratch. This machine's off, granted. That's why I can touch the tungsten without it arcing. A uh, scratch machine is you just scratch the tungsten across a really quick but barely lift it up to initiate the arc. Sometimes the tungsten gets stuck, which isn't good. You got to clean the tungsten again. Those are your basic crude, basically a stick machine, like an old AC buzz box if you hook the TIG torch to it. This is a lift machine, which is a lot cleaner. Basically, you touch the tungsten down. As soon as you lift it off to the height you want to TIG weld, it initiates an arc. 
a lot nicer. To break it, you just kind of roll it back and pull it away for a moment and bring it back in for a little bit of gas coverage. Once you have enough gas coverage and it cooled down, you turn off the torch. So one of the final things I want to talk about before you actually start an arc is clean, clean, clean. I always heard a bunch about, oh, aluminum has to be spotless to weld. Yeah, it should be clean, but it almost feels a little more forgiving to me than steel. Granted, both aluminum and steel both need to be clean, clean, clean. So on steel, I'm gonna take a flat wheel here. We're gonna grind all the mill slag off. You don't want paint, you don't want rust, you want mill slag. You don't want any of that on there because it's gonna create little sparks. If you're seeing sparks, you probably got mill slag. And then after that, we got a little acetone. We'll wipe down our welding filler rod and we'll wipe down our work area. We're gonna be welding, especially key for aluminum. We're gonna do it all the same on here because clean, clean, clean is important. So let's clean this up real quick. Clean up our filler rod here. We're not gonna use this filler rod right off the bat. We're gonna use it in a moment, but it's kind of good practice. This is 330 seconds filler rod. You're gonna cut it in half. The reason is it's super long. It's gonna be bouncing around out here. You don't need long filler rod for, especially when you're learning. It's just gonna complicate things. But we're not even gonna touch the filler rod first. We're gonna leave it over here. We're gonna work on this piece. I'm gonna show you how to start an arc, how to hold the torch, and how to move across the metal. Real quick note about personal protection. Here's some thin TIG gloves. They work really well. Of course, they're very thin, so if you touch hot metal, you're gonna get burned through them. Just don't touch hot stuff. I commonly use these for MIG and TIG welding. They're just kind of a mid-thickness general work glove. Uh, get an auto-dim helmet. They're extremely important for TIG welding, especially if you're learning because you can see what you're actually doing. Not 100% necessary, but it's gonna make you a lot easier if you have one. I usually weld around shade 11 for this stuff. Um, I try to run the shade on the darker side if I can. You figure out what's safe and what works well for you. Welding respirators are always advised. I'm not going to be wearing this one so I can actually talk while I'm welding. I also have an overhead fan, exhaust fan that goes out. If you're welding in aluminum and stainless, please get a welding respirator and wear it because they put off some pretty nasty gas. So just nasty stuff on that. So stainless steel and aluminum, especially get a respirator. All right, we'll go over how to hold the torch, get comfortable, and we'll start an arc. We do not have the welder on yet. This is only for demonstration purposes right now. That's why I can touch on the metal without getting an arc in my face. So basically, comfortable that's very important just be comfortable put on some symphony music some hip-hop whatever you like just relax maybe not too loud just hang out some people throw the lead over their shoulder that feels awkward to me i've never liked that i just let it dangle on the floor make sure it's not too heavy make sure it's not coiled up a bunch on the floor or around your foot or around the chair you just want it to feel kind of light in your hand i'm right-handed so i'm holding my right hand we're not going to get in a feeding rod at this moment but if you were you'd hold the rod in your left hand Lean it over about 15 to 20 degree angle and then you'd feed the rod with your left hand and move towards the rod. So I'd be traveling this way and feeding the rod. I can get into that just yet. Basically, here's the torch. You're gonna touch on the metal, but I'm gonna bring it over like this and travel about a 15 degree angle down the metal. So basically, we're gonna turn on the gas like that. If this machine was on, I had a helmet on, you'd touch it on here. You'd start an arc, you keep it off about 3 16 of an inch. You would travel it down after it becomes liquid. You can see the little pool li liquefy. Travel it down an inch or two, and when we're ready to break the, the arc, we're gonna lift off really quick at an angle, and then we're gonna bring it back in. Do not touch the tungsten, and it'll start another arc. And we're gonna keep that shielding gas on until it cools down for about five to eight seconds. And then we're gonna shut off the shielding gas. I'll bring you guys in for a close up. We're gonna try to film this. So we're gonna set the machine over to TIG, lift. And we're gonna turn it up to about 120 amps is pretty good for eighth inch. This is probably quarter inch, it doesn't really matter. We're just mostly working on technique. Wanna rest your wrist on the table? I might sound kind of funny after this, I'm gonna lower my hoods, but here we go. We're gonna turn on the gas valve. You're gonna drop the tungsten onto the metal. You're gonna lift off, there it starts to initiate your arc. You're gonna wait till it pools a little bit, and we're gonna follow it down the metal at about a 15 degree angle. keeping it off about 3 16 of an inch. Now we're gonna tilt the torch back and we're gonna break the arc by pulling away really quick. Then we're gonna bring that tungsten down, do not touch it back to the metal. And once the metal cools off a little bit, six seconds or so, we're gonna turn off the torch valve. All right, one more time with the filter in place, turn on your gas, touch off, wait until it starts to pool, 
and then move forward maintaining about 3 16 gap lean back break your arc bring it back in do you see how long that arc traveled there because I did it really slow I didn't break away quick gas coverage now turn off the gas I'll show one other thing here here's what happens when you vary your arc turn on your gas come in really close if you come in too close you're going to dip your tungsten in the metal it wick right up and you have to grind it clean if you bring it out too far you see how far the arc gets it makes your puddle really wide but you end up not having a stable of an arc and you can risk getting bad uh, shielding gas coverage getting too far out there you can bend bring this way out you'll see the arc when you want to travel and break the arc you know we're, we're pulled off like really far here see that bubbling the metal coming out there because it's getting a bunch of contamination there see you go so you want to bring that in close we're getting a ton of contamination there because we brought it too far away bringing it back in now a lot closer and much tighter arc okay we're gonna break the arc really quick here see that we'll bring it back over that and cool it down so you guys got to see when you bring this thing too far away you get a big arc just unstable and you start introducing oxygen to your weld you get a bunch of bubbling and we left a crater there so I want you guys to practice that technique for a while before you even try to incorporate filler rod to it because you want to get in a routine of turning on the torch before you start to initiate the arc you're gonna make that mistake sooner or later and you're gonna realize really quick without gas coverage it's gonna splatter the metal it's gonna get up on the tungsten if that happens don't try to push on it's a lost cause just pull out the tungsten clean it with the grinder and come back and start over again work on keeping your height the same off the metal that's key and being comfortable you don't want to be all nervous when you're going to start the arc and break it you just want to be comfortable and relaxed you're going to get it once you get that figured out move on we got the welder still set at about 120 amps we got some eighth inch i got a bunch of slots cut in it with the little bandsaw and this kind of mimics like you're joining two pieces of metal together without actually having to tack weld a bunch of pieces of metal together. So basically we're going to add filler rod. I'll bring you guys close in one more round of how to add the filler rod. And then we're going to do a few pieces here and then wrap up the video. Okay, we got our eighth inch steel here. I got the little slots cut in it. And we got everything cleaned up with the flat wheel. You can see around the edges, this is some mill slag and rust contamination. You don't want that anywhere near your weld. Or if you do have that close by, you'll get splatter. You'll get contamination on your tungsten and it's just no good. So make sure everything's clean, 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 like we said before. So a few things before we get going on this. You don't want to be bringing your filler rod in and out of the weld area. You want to keep it close in front of the tungsten because this area right down here is where all your shielding gas is. If you're bringing in and out a bunch, you're going to introduce oxygen to the weld and it's going to be porosity and contamination. So when you get going on it, of course the welder's off right now. This is just for demonstration. You're going to want to turn on your gas valve. You want to touch off right at the beginning of your weld. You're going to want to hold it there for a few seconds until you see a nice little liquid pool of metal right there. And once you see that, you're going to want to add your filler rod. Keep in mind, every time you add your filler rod, your little weld puddle is going to cool down a little bit because you're introducing cold metal to it. You're going to kind of want to keep adding that. You're not going to want to hop your torch with your filler rod. That is not good. You want to keep your torch at steady height. Just add your filler rod until you get to the end of your weld. And once you get there, pull out your filler rod, tilt it back, kick it away for a moment, break your arc, bring it back in, and hold the shielding gas on it for about six to eight seconds. Turn off your torch and you're good to go. Here we go. We got the welder set to about 120 amps. I'm gonna start the gas valve here and get going. Feels like it's a little on the hot side. We'll probably turn it down to about 110. Keep that area cooled down with that tungsten. You want to get that tungsten shielded and the weld puddle shielded there. So we're about a little hot, so we're gonna bring it down to about 110 amps from 120. So this is just stuff you can keep practicing on until you get the technique figured out. Turn on your gas, start your weld, wait for that puddle, which happened pretty quick here. Start dabbing your filler rod. Break the arc, pull it away, cool down the tungsten and cool down the area with the gas flow and cut down on the porosity in the weld. All 
All right, one of the last things I want to leave for you guys a little tip is don't ever forget to turn off your argon gas. Make sure when you're done, turn it off, even double check it. Because the worst thing is to have a full tank of argon when you're done practicing. Come back a day or two later and have the smallest little leak and your bottle's empty. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, this is like about 20 minute or so video just to the basics on TIG welding. I don't claim to be a professional. I taught myself how to TIG weld about two years ago. It's been a great technique for me for welding up certain things like I welded a 16th inch uh, hydraulic tank for my articulating dump truck. You can do really thin metals with TIG, detailed work, and the aluminum welding aspect with an AC machine is nice. And at some point down the road, I'll do an AC video on aluminum welding specifically and setting up an AC machine. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and consider subscribing. All right, till next time, guys. Take care. Bye.